page six. Picture effects is off. I believe it's basically like a post process. When it saves a JPEG, it post processes it with this effect. Let's uh, jump back this one. So we put it on JPEG, and then, yeah, picture effects comes on. So you can go through here, and you can set your what it's going, how it's going to save the the JPEG into any color mode you want. File is your video picture profile. So if you wanted the flat mode, if you're going to color code your video and you want it as flat as possible so it gets as much of the dynamic range as possible it captured and then you can go a lot, go later in your video editor and change the, you know, and extract as much data in the way you want from that then you use PP7 so that's like your S-log if you will so you can see now it looks a little bit flatter than it did on the no picture profile and you can go through all the different picture profile modes there are there is a list somewhere what what they are and then in each one you can come in and you can customize this so it's pretty cool you can go in and set those up yourself okay zoom i've never used i believe it's for jpeg again basically when you take the picture it will be zoomed in uh, i think kind of strange it's not like focus magnifier i don't think so if we look at that picture yeah so it basically crops it because if you can imagine this is a 42 megapixel camera, if you're only taking pictures that are a lot smaller, like 12 megapixel, so you can use a part of the sensor and it'll save that as a JPEG. We're still on tab one, page six, I believe. Okay, we need to get back out of, uh, back into raw. Okay, so page six, so focus magnifier, I think is one of the best things with this camera of how I use it. So this is only manual focus, so if we switch that over, so now what this allows, I say it's absolutely fantastic, is what it allows is when you go to focus with, so I'm touching the camera manual focus and, and we can see it actually zooms into an area just so we can focus it and so we can play around with that. We can even move it around so we can move around what the camera can see and focus different areas. Video, if you're doing macro, so you can imagine normally you can we're shooting 4K and you can crop really well into that 4K, but on other cameras I've had, you've not been able to see the detail that you're, you're going to crop into. So if you imagine there's something like a quarter the size of 4K, like an insect or something, you have to focus it based on the full thing. And then when you're editing, you can go and zoom in, you go, out of focus. But with this, it's not the case. You can zoom in and you know, like if I'm going to record this in 4K now, that this key will be in focus. So later on when I want to go and crop, it's going to be in focus. It's fantastic. Another place that's great is on the the telescope. So if I'm looking at Saturn, for instance, and Saturn's a little dot on my screen, and I'm trying to focus into a clearer dot, and we, and it's it's very difficult to know if it's in focus. I can use this zoom magnifier and just focus in on Saturn real time while the video is recording, and then I know when I crop in on that in the video later on. I'm going to actually see the rings and I've got it in the focus as best as I possibly could. Now there's a different option of doing that with a lens that's not supported. So in, in this guy I just touch the, the focus ring and it zooms in. Now what you do if the lens is not supported, like on a telescope, because it's not supported by the camera, it doesn't know if I'm focusing manually. You press delete and it'll give you a box. Let me just see if I can do that on a... There we go. So if you press delete you get a box, you can move that round use the wheel to up and down, I'll use it left and right, and then press your middle button. So with my telescope, I'd do the same, and then I could manually focus my telescope. Absolutely brilliant functionality. One of the best things for me of this camera is that option because it just allows me to uh, record, focus on very small parts of the video that 4K allows you to zoom in with later. Long exposure noise reduction, if you're doing, you know, again, astrophotography or something like that, it'll help out. Uh, high ISO, noise reduction, uh, similar if you've got, well, it only works in JPEG, so it's like the post-processing, I guess, and it's only, uh, if you max to like 128,000 ISO or something, it might, might help reduce that and give you a better JPEG output. Self-explanatory, center lock, the autofocus, uh, smile face detection, this camera has a whole thing where you can register, I think it might be five faces, and then it will prioritize, <laughs> when you when you use the smile to take a picture which is another function it will prioritize the people it recognizes so if you go into a party and you've got your wife and this you know she's with five other people you really want when she smiles you know for her to look good that's basically what it is soft skin effect and i never used it i'm going to skip over it
Okay, this is uh, another JPEG. Yeah, it is. So this is another kind of point-and-shoot camera option where it will uh, crop. So if you have a couple of faces in there, or you know, a, a car or something, it'll just do like a easy auto crop. Never used it. Okay, auto mode is uh, when you have the, the ring in auto mode, which I never do. It will allow us to choose different modes of how it works. If I switch that over, you can see we get this uh, like icon at the top left. It's like intelligent mode. And then we can go in here and we can choose. And it gives us a little crappy picture of what that does for you. And it'll just try and figure out the scenario for you. So you just have to fire and shoot and it'll give you the best thing. I never use it. Okay. Dog over there. Dogums. Scene selection. Okay, so it's scene selection, I've just switched it into SCN for scene, and it has, again, pre setups for what you may, what kind of photography you may be doing. So, again, I don't use it. I think owning this camera, and I don't know, using those modes, maybe. Movie option only comes up when we have it in movie mode, so again, we have to spin this to the little, like the little clip. And the problem is then it. it in movie mode, it, with the menu, it won't allow me to export it, so I can't really show you that. But basically what it does, it gives you a lot of the stuff that's already in the menu. And steady shot is pretty obvious. So the the camera has built in five axis gimbal. So if you shake the camera, you'll hear it rattle a bit. And that's the the, 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 the sensor rattling around on the on the buffer area, the springs, if you will, that yeah, it uses for its, its stability. So you can turn that on and off. If you're on a... If you're in a studio, you really don't need, the camera's just stationary and you're just basically firing it off. You'd probably best just turn that off because it's just extra power consumption and things like that. It'll heat the, might heat the camera for a little bit more than normal. And in there we've got the settings. So, you can go and set that to manual and you could say, you know, what kind of lens you're using. So if you're using a super long lens, I don't know what it goes up to. It goes up to like 400 or something. All the way up to 1,000, wow. So I guess I could try that with astronomy. I never thought about that before, but I could try that. And uh, because the, it's very, very sensitive when you've got this meter-long uh, scope. Okay, auto slow shut sputter, sputter is it'll basically slow the shutter down in spot in darker uh, scenarios, so you reduce the noise. But I'm not, I don't have it on. I'm not not used it. Could worth could be worth trying. Uh, I generally record a lot in 24p, so I don't know if I'd want to give it much less than that because it might get uh, like jumping frames or stuttering. Audio recording is quite obvious, it just won't record audio onto your video file if you do that. Now I don't know why audio record level is not on there. Yeah. yeah. So basically it just allows you to change the level. You can do that. I've seen that elsewhere. I don't know if it's the same function. Okay, I've never had any problems with myself, but supposedly there's a bit of a delay between the, the when you're recording video and the audio. And if you choose this, it will uh, choose lip sync. It will supposedly sim sync exactly with, with a delay that it assumes or it knows, depending on the video uh, recording quality and all that, I guess. I've never seen a problem with it, so I, don't, I really don't know about that. Wind noise reduction is quite obvious. I don't think the, the mic built into the camera is very good anyway for, for wind, so you may want to put something on there, uh, dead cat that they call them, to help with that. So memory recall and memory are associated with your memory buttons on the dial, so you can, you can choose uh, a lot of custom settings and then just flip the dial to that area and you'll have all those settings straight away. So if we go inside memory, you get to see uh, it comes up with like one and two for your modes and then in, in the four memory modes. Uh, I'm not going to go into this. It's basically all the settings that we've been looking at. Okay, that concludes page one of six. So I, they're not all as long. So I think one and two are the longest. And then uh, and we'll see. And I think the, the settings, the second tab, which is what settings, I guess, uh, deviate from the sixth, which I'd call configuration, uh, is more to do with the, the real-time effects for when you're recording or you know, the overlay on screen graphics, things like that.